Hello, in this video we are going to discuss a breakthrough high temperature PEM fuel cell technology that is poised to provide a major boost for the electric aviation industry. A lot of us do not appreciate the fuel cell technology. There are obvious reasons for it. First is the round trip efficiency which is much lower compared to battery powered systems. This reduced efficiency leads to higher operational costs. Furthermore, the purchase cost of a fuel cell is also very high. And then there is the famous tweet by Elon Musk which simply reads, fuel cells is equal to fuel cells. Elon has shown his disdain for this technology on a number of occasions. However, there are quite a few unique benefits that the fuel cell bring to the table. For example, they don't require difficult to mine materials, they don't have a very limited shelf life, and there are little concerns of a thermal runaway as they are inherently safer. And above all, fuel cell system can carry a high amount of energy which batteries cannot. And there lies its strongest case for being used in the electric aviation sector. The benefits of electric aviation are also becoming clearer to us. Using motors as opposed to combustion engines, we get higher efficiency which is further improved by using techniques such as distributed propulsion and boundary layer ingestion. And now with fuel cells, we can also go the distance. There are a couple of things that have held fuel cells back. First is the cost which is dropping to half the original value every six years. And the second is the power density. Fuel cells cannot provide a high amount of power for the same amount of weight as batteries. Therefore, in most systems, they have to be supplemented by batteries. It should be also noted that it takes a while for the fuel cells to provide its peak power after key on. This is because there are multiple mechanical and thermodynamic steps that are involved in the electricity generation, from the release of hydrogen out of the tanks to the air induction from the atmosphere, and then the optimization of their flow rates and achieving the desired combination rate. On the other hand, power can be taken out from the batteries instantaneously right from the start. A fuel cell therefore has to be supplemented with batteries and the amount of batteries required will depend upon the maximum required power level. Therefore, for a smaller EV toll, it does not make sense to bring fuel cells into the mix and complicate a system that can be run on batteries alone. In a larger aircraft, the benefit of fuel cells becomes more apparent. This, however, has changed with the recent innovation. In May 2021, High Point, a California-based organization, released a white paper in which they showcased their breakthrough technology, which is a turbo-air-cooled, high-temperature proton exchange membrane fuel cell. Compared to other fuel cells, this can deliver three times more specific power. It is also very robust and can operate with a lower purity of hydrogen. Its lifespan is four times that of other fuel cells. Note that hydrogen is produced by industrial methods such as gas reforming may end up with some quantity of carbon monoxide. And even the tiniest amount of carbon monoxide can poison the platinum catalysts that are key to driving the fuel cell. Therefore, a higher purity level of hydrogen is required, which drives up the cost. However, the high point fuel cell has a higher carbon monoxide impurity tolerance of 1% as opposed to 0.001% required for most fuel cells. Furthermore, this breakthrough product is climate independent and can operate in conditions from minus 60 degrees centigrade to plus 60 degrees centigrade. The turbo air cooled or TAC is the first fuel cell that has been created with the aeronautical application in mind. In a car application, volume is an issue while weight of the fuel cell isn't much of a problem. Most of the technology for automotive application is based on low temperature PEM. This requires a cooling system which can add to the weight. In fact, the cooling system can be as high as 51% of the fuel cell weight because the idea in automobile application is to maximize the efficiency which can reach 70% or more. In aviation, weight is the enemy. And if the weight of the fuel cell system can be significantly reduced, 
even with the drop in efficiency, then such a power system is much more desirable. High points TAC fuel cell operates at a higher maximum temperature of 160 degrees centigrade as opposed to 70 degrees centigrade. It utilizes compressed air that serves to feed both oxygen to the fuel cell and also cools it. The compressed air is recirculated through the fuel cell. This design has resulted in a very light simplified system, eliminating the need for an entire liquid cooling circuit, including liquid coolant, pump and tubing. The high specific power of the TAC PM fuel cell makes it possible to supply power in all operational flight modes without the need of a heavy supplementary lithium ion battery buffer to provide the peak load. High Point have done some calculations to show how much flight time will be achieved with their system on board. The 590 kg system weight that includes the fuel that is hydrogen in tank would provide 450 kW of electricity for VTOL and 210 kW for cruise and would give a flight time of 118 minutes. And this system can provide 450 kilowatts load without any battery buffer. This is ideal for an aircraft like the Lilium 5-seater, which requires similar values of power for takeoff and lower power for cruise. The energy density for this system comes out to be 735 watt hour per kilogram. There's also a lower weight configuration that can be achieved with a TAC fuel cell. A 235 kilogram system with weight of hydrogen fuel can provide 300 kilowatts for takeoff and landing and 65 kilowatts during cruise. This system can power the two-seater Maker by Archer, the Joby S2 or Heaviside by Kitty Hawk and provide a total flight time of 100 minutes. The energy density comes out to be 520 watt hour per kilogram, although this is relatively lower than the larger system fuel cell because some of the fixed weight, but still is much higher than a battery system. Note that Archer uses a 400 kilogram battery pack and this system is 165 kilograms lighter, which means even with a 55 kilogram buffer battery, it can provide either a higher payload or longer range. Let's finally look at the cost. Note that the operational efficiency of the TAC fuel cell is 40 to 50% depending upon the operation mode. This means the round trip efficiency from the plug to power at the propulsor for this fuel cell system is just 35% to 40%. On the other hand, the round trip efficiency of a battery powered aircraft is above 90%. This implies that operating cost of any aircraft using the TAC will be more than two times higher than pure battery electric aircraft. But given that the equivalent AF gas required for a similar flight time would cost more than the cost of electricity consumed by the TAC fuel cell, it still has a lower operational cost. There are question marks over the price of TAC fuel cell system though. The price of batteries is approaching $100 per kilowatt hour. The cost of the fuel cell system is given in dollars per kilowatt as the total energy or kilowatt hour is just dependent upon the amount of hydrogen that can be carried. Currently, High Point's fuel cell cost is expected to be between $100 to $500 per kilowatt if mass produced. This means that even at a lower price point, 300 kilowatt fuel cell would cost $30,000. The fuel cell systems will have to approach a similar price range of a large battery pack if it wants to remain competitive and make inroads in the aviation industry. And with this, the video is concluded. If you learned something from the video, please do give it a thumbs up. Thank you for your attention.